And now we're talking to Alan Sheffer, the executive director of the Diesel Technology Forum, about a pretty cool uh, top 10 list uh, about the um, green cars, which uh, now include half of them are diesel. How are you, Alan? Great. I'm uh, fantastic. Good to speak with you, Javier. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, we talked uh, to you about like a year ago, I think, about other some reports and uh, every time uh, it seems to be more advancements in uh, the diesel technology being incorporated into the auto fleet here in the United States, huh? Absolutely. There's uh, just a continuing groundswell of interest in, in clean diesel technology cars, trucks and SUVs. And we're excited about uh, this most recent uh, study that came out of AAA earlier this week. Yeah. Can you uh, tell us about it, please? Yeah. Well, the uh, American Automobile Association, the AAA, which is uh, really known as an objective voice in the, in the interest of motorists, has a huge following here in the U.S., and every year they put out a green car guide. And the most recent edition came out uh, earlier this week, and they ranked 83 vehicles um, based on a variety of characteristics, including a whole range of things, handling, cargo carrying capacity, ride quality, braking, fuel economy, emissions, uh, and other factors. And um, when all was said and done, uh, the really interesting news is that clean diesels took five of the top ten spots. Uh, first on the list was the Tesla, the all-electric vehicle yeah, that no, uh, everyone's familiar with. And, yeah, no surprise um, there, I guess, huh? <laughs> uh, a little bit pricey, a little bit pricey. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is really a, a neat thing to see the clean diesels uh, coming up as high as they did. And, and they also beat out uh, a good number of hybrids and uh, natural gas and other vehicles that were included in the survey. So I think it's a what it says is that um, when you look objectively at uh, this growing choice of cars and fuels and technology that will drive us into the future, that clean diesel shows up as one of the best choices out there. And because of the fuel economy, because of the performance, the great get up and go, uh, it's fun to drive, and I think most of all that it's a proven technology and consumers don't have to compromise. You know, you can get the size of car you want, you can haul stuff, you can tow stuff, whatever you need to do. So yeah. we're excited about the report. Yeah, uh, very interesting also that in the list, I mean, we're going to go through the list pretty quick. We're going to post it on our webpage so people can take a look at it. So you said Tesla number one, Toyota uh, RAV4. And then uh, the first diesel is the Audi A7, and then Lexus GS, a hybrid, Nissan Leaf, a fully electric car, Honda Accord, a hybrid, and then like all diesels uh, after, Audi Q5, Audi A8, Mercedes-Benz E250, and then Audi A6. So Audi seems to be um, far ahead of the competition in this uh, particular list. They, they did have a lock on the uh, on most of the top 10 slots there, but uh, you know, it's It's a great, uh, great technology, and I, in fact, am driving an A6 TDI right now, and it's a, uh, it's really a fantastic vehicle. So, um, I, I definitely would vote it up higher in the list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I've driven some of the the diesels from Audi also, and uh, they're they're fantastic, uh, and. Uh, The Germans in general, I mean, Mercedes-Benz is there, BMW is not there, Volkswagen is not there, but uh, in the case of Audi and uh, Volkswagen, they're the same group. They share some of the technologies along with Porsche. They are, belong to the big Volkswagen group. So they share a lot of that, and, and, and maybe that's why they're ahead of the game here, huh? That's right, and uh, there, there's definitely a lot of crossover in the engine technology, and, and that, I think, is... Uh, You know, it's, it's not unusual for other manufacturers as well, but I think, um, you know, Audi has really established itself as a leader in the clean diesel field and has been not afraid to get out and talk about that with some very popular ads on television and, um, you know, really uh, getting getting uh, out in front with the, the clean diesel message. So this is uh, what you get for that. You get the really high rankings in the top 10 list. So, Alan, um, can you uh, tell our audience a little bit about the the, the technology forum, on, but also uh, what are the, the main advantages? I mean, uh, there seem to be pretty obvious to uh, people like you who are an expert in the field, but for some people there might be still a little bit of uh, questions about this. For example, the other day I talked to somebody and they were saying, well, I don't see gas stations with diesel around my neighborhood, and maybe because they're not paying attention, huh? Well, exactly right. And, you know, uh, there are some folks still out there with some misperceptions or maybe just don't know, um, haven't really looked at it before. But, um, you know, diesel's been around uh, the U.S. for well over 100 years. And 
many people recognize diesel as the fuel that powers big trucks and buses and uh, construction equipment, farm equipment, that kind of stuff. And all that's true. But the exciting thing is that in the last five or six years, we've really seen a huge increase in the clean diesel passenger cars, trucks, and SUVs in the U.S. And it's because of a couple reasons. First of all is the fuel efficiency of the diesel. Uh, you're going to get at least 30% better fuel economy than the comparable gasoline engine. And you're going to get that fuel economy um, no matter when you drive or where you drive. And it's not like a hybrid where if you're not driving stop and go in the city, um, you're not going to get the big mileage yeah. number that EPA has on the sticker. So diesel really delivers the mileage that it says it's going to give you. And, and you have the performance today that you didn't have 15 and 20 years ago. The diesels are, are very quick to start out. They've got a lot of what we call low-end torque. Really, when you step on the gas, you get pushed back in your seat, and away you go. And uh, folks like that performance, and that's because of a lot of uh, advanced turbocharging technology and fuel injection systems that really make the diesel a great performance machine. And I think most importantly, folks now recognize that diesel is a clean technology. And, you know, gone are the days where there was a puff of black smoke from the exhaust pipe when the diesel yeah. car got started. Um, forget about all that. The fuel is cleaner. We've got the most advanced emissions control systems on diesels than of any car out there. Even, even many gasoline uh, vehicles don't have as sophisticated emissions controls as the diesel. So um, when you're looking at a diesel, you're making a, a choice that's fuel efficient, it's going to be there for the long haul, the long-term investment, and you're going to enjoy the driving that you get out of it, and you're going to have uh, an increasing choice of vehicles. I think right now in the U.S. there's uh, about 23 um, vehicles that are available, and uh, I'm sorry, 40, there are there are uh, 44 choices of cars, pickup trucks, SUVs, and vans, and that number is going to significantly increase if uh, we expect it to double in the next couple of years. And the uh, one of the reasons behind that is not just the consumers being interested in it, but because we have these new fuel economy requirements here in the U.S., manufacturers have to make cars that achieve almost 52 and a half miles a gallon here by 2025. Yeah. And diesels are going to play a huge role in that because uh, it's just a very high standard and diesel is the most energy efficient internal combustion engine. So that's why you're going to see more more choices coming out in the not too distant future. And, and you're going to be, uh, uh, this is also kind of an exciting year because we've had the first um, uh, light, uh, the light duty full size pickup truck have a diesel engine option. Yeah, the, Ram, the, the Ram 1500, right? That's right, the Ram 1500 Eco Diesel. Um, the thing is, you know, sold out. I mean, the people are, are just knocking down the doors to get that vehicle. Uh, very high fuel economy on the highway, 28 miles a gallon. And I think it starts, it starts the race for pickups to come in with more diesels. And we've already seen um, Chevrolet and GMC make a commitment to um, bring uh, diesel engines in their smaller pickup trucks, the Canyon uh, and the Chevrolet Colorado. Uh, so those are smaller, compact pickup trucks. Yeah. They'll so, be getting a diesel engine in 2016. Yeah. So I guess the next step, because where you were talking about the new requirements of the CAFE standards, the next step, I guess, are going to be uh, hybrids with diesel engines instead of uh, hybrids with gasoline engines, because then you get like the double benefit from both technologies. Well, that's that's right. Well, we'll see how that uh, how that works out. I think there are there are issues with. Not really the technology, but it boils down to the dollars and cents. Yeah. And the, the diesel is a, a little bit of a premium technology. You're going to pay a little more for it up front, but it's going to pay you back in fuel efficiency and, and long-term value. Um, the hybrid adds, you know, additional cost to that yet. So um, we'll see. I think uh, Volkswagen is, is sort of uh, one that's more talkative about that, and they've talked about their cross-blue plug-in hybrid TDI that might be out as early as 2016. So it's it's very likely in two years or so you'll have a hybrid diesel choice. Yeah. We're talking to Alan Sheffer, the executive director of the Diesel Technology Forum. And Alan, uh, one of the things is does the, the forum uh, had made any calculations about when do you recuperate the initial investment of a more expensive car down the road uh, when you use a diesel car? Well, uh, 
it, it's a great question, and it, it's, there's a couple of factors that, that go in there. And, you know, you've got the upfront cost of the car. Um, you compare that to a gasoline vehicle, and there's, you're going to pay more for a diesel. And, you know, typically um, that's anywhere from $1,500 to 2000 or so. And um, so you've got a higher upfront cost. Uh, the diesel is going to be 30 to 40% more fuel efficient than the gasoline, so you're going to you're going to use less fuel overall. Now, the diesel fuel costs more than gasoline right now in the U.S., so um, it, it probably takes anywhere from about six to eight years to get the full return on investment, depending on the vehicle. Yeah, um, it, It's very vehicle dependent. We and, and, and the other thing that I didn't mention, another key factor is the resale value. So if you hang on to the diesel for, you know, five, six, seven years, when you go to sell that vehicle, you're going to get 125% typically of the blue book value of a comparable gasoline. So yeah. they're they're going to have a higher return on investment uh, in the long run because of the resale value, the fuel efficiency, and um, um, just the, the overall um, economics of owning a diesel. Yeah, so, it benefits all over the place. And uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Alan, but we're running out of time on this segment. So uh, where can uh, our audience find more information about the, the, technology, the diesel technology forum, please? Check out our website at www.dieselforum.org. Excellent. Thank you, Alan, again for your time, and uh, we hope uh, I hope uh, that we talk to, to you sooner than the, the last time, okay? Thank you, Albert. Thank, Thank you. Here. Bye. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.